Hello everyone and in this video I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily get your own server at Hetzner Cloud. Stay tuned. So before we get into it I quickly want to show you something. So I've been a DigitalOcean user for a couple of years but uh, recently I decided to give Hetzner um, a try actually and uh, I did a couple of benchmarks and the results are quite interesting here. So uh, please take a look. Especially in the, uh, I performed this uh, Geekbench uh, benchmark on uh, two servers, one on DigitalOcean and um, the other on uh, Hetzner. And especially the results on this single core department are quite interesting here. So um, here we have a $15 machine uh, on DigitalOcean compared to a full $4 machine on Hetzner. And the $4 machine actually beats at the same base frequency of the CPU, beats the $15 machine on DigitalOcean and actually gets quite close in the multicore score. So just uh, something to think about, yeah. Uh, the machines that I've provisioned here for this uh, mini benchmark were the, um, this one basically, $15 one, we got two gigs of RAM, uh, two CPUs, um, but three terabytes of transfer and 16 gigs of ssd and on the hetzner side um it was this um i believe not even four dollar it was three dollars and a half uh, machine if you convert the euros basically one vcpu two gigs of ram um slightly less uh, about three times less disk space so if you're into more disk space i guess you can go with a digital ocean but I guess please consider again the pricing, um, but you get a lot more traffic here. So just something to think about. Anyway, let's get uh, into the tutorial basically. So after you sign up, basically this is your um, landing page on the Hesner Cloud Console. Uh, so what we want to do first is to select our project or create your own custom project. So once we're inside of the project, uh, we can click on add a server. Okay. So the first thing uh, that we have to select here is the location of our server. And uh, I would suggest to select a location which is closer to you. Well, we don't have that much choice here compared to other providers and um, especially DigitalOcean, which has a bit bigger network uh, in here, but what Hetzner is offering us is some uh, pretty decent sort of offerings if you are in Europe. Okay, so um, we have here three servers. In my case, because I'm in located in Estonia, I go with uh, the Finnish server usually. But if you're more into the other closer to Germany, I would suggest to go with the um, German servers. Uh, actually, the Nuremberg one, I think, is the biggest one, and on average, uh, it would give you about one millisecond uh, less of a um, round trip time for your requests. And there has been reports um, from the users from the US uh, that the uh, compared the round trip time for a, a request which originates from US and targets these two servers actually. Uh, the difference was about um, 10 milliseconds time between Nuremberg and Falkenstein. So if you're in Europe, the difference would be like one millisecond, but you, if you're further away, um, I would suggest going with the Nuremberg, which uh, is slightly faster based on those uh, user reports. Okay, so select the location which is closer to you. Uh, second, we have to select our image for the server. And here we have a couple of uh, Linux flavors. Okay, the most popular one is Ubuntu. Uh, and the most sort of um, resource efficient, at least based on my personal benchmarks, is the Debian, uh, which would eat about 70 megabytes of RAM uh, after a clean install, a clean provisioning. Okay, so usually I prefer uh, Debian, which I can select as well um, at the moment. Okay, type number three. Uh, basically, we choose whether we want a 
dedicated server or standard server so with the standard options um, i believe that the um, resources of our server especially the cpu resources are going to be shared okay so that means when our um, server is idling i believe um, Hetzner will distribute okay the CPU resources to the other tenants, uh, while uh, with the dedicated option, basically we have the CPUs uh, locked uh, to ourselves okay at all times. So if you have more uh, performance-oriented uh, use cases, so I would suggest to go with that. Okay, otherwise uh, just go with the standard uh, storage types. We got uh, two types here local meaning that the storage is physically attached to the machine and the network type which means that the storage is detached from the machine and uh, the machine and the storage um, detached storage are connected via the some high speed uh, gigabit network for example um, so the choice whether you go with local or network is based on whether you want slightly more performance, in which case you would want to go with the local or you want some more uh, sort of availability. Because I believe with this uh, network and SEV option that the storage is replicated at least twice. So it's sort of handled for you. Uh, while with the um, local option, if you want some uh, fault tolerance, uh, you, I believe you need to enable some backups and uh, regular snapshots of your drive. And in case it fails, you basically restore from that. While with the network option, uh, in the case of failure, it sort of should be handled for you with minimum downtime. Um, basically, it's handled by this Ceph uh, cluster. Okay. Okay, let's go with the simplest option here, standard and uh, local SSD. Uh, now, depending on your um, use case and the requirements, okay, you need to select how much resources do you want to allocate to your virtual machine, uh, how many vCPUs, RAM, how much disk space, uh, how much traffic, in this case, traffic is capped at 20 terabytes. Uh, I believe if you want higher Maybe you can make an agreement with the uh, Hetzner uh, cloud, um, basically the people in charge, okay, uh, contact them. So next you have here the price and conveniently the monthly price. Okay, so let's select the um, minimal configuration here just for demo purposes. Okay, additionally, if you need some more storage, you can attach a volume in here like so in my case i'm not going to do that you can create additionally a sort of subnet so if you have multiple um, servers microservices um, you can configure them so they can talk over this uh, subnet with each other okay uh, you can additionally um, specify a user uh, script okay that will be executed after the machine uh, boots up successfully for example you want to choose um, your flavor of linux and then you want to install something like docker and then run a couple of uh, containers on top of docker so in here you can specify the installation script uh, installation commands for docker which is quite convenient and uh, as i mentioned before if you want if you've used the local storage uh, suggested to enable backups okay for uh, extra 20 uh, percent extra costs on top of the server price okay next up we're going to need an ssh key in order to uh, connect to our machine and in my case uh, i'm using linux in your case if you're using windows uh, you'll have to google this part i'm not um, convinced that i can a hundred percent with a hundred percent precision uh, tell you uh, the location of ssh configuration in windows i'm primarily a linux user okay so uh, in my case um, if you don't have an ssh key but i would assume you have if you're using github on other remote 
uh, code storage probably you uh, were asked before to create ssh key okay in order to push the code there uh, but in any case if you don't have just run ssh key gen enter and it's going to give you a couple of uh, questions okay where do you want to store your keys uh, what's your email name and some extra uh, inputs okay just go through it and basically by default your ssh key is going to be located uh, in the home folder so i can output it in my case with cat so it's in the home folder under the dot ssh and uh, what i want to what hetzner requires from me is my ssh public key okay which is located at home dot uh, ssh folder and the uh, id underscore rsa dot pub that's going to be my public key okay, and with cat i can output it and basically you copy the entire contents of it uh, click on add ssh key uh, paste it in here okay, and do it now again and just create a name just to reference your ssh key so that you later if you have uh, a couple of them you don't confuse them okay, and click add ssh key in my case i've done it um, already so i can just click on my um, ssh key and that's basically it for the ssh and our last step is to um, give our server a name in my case um, it's already auto completed in here and i'm totally fine with it okay once you're done uh, hit create and buy now Yep, one of the great things of um, Hetzner Cloud is that provisioning just literally takes seconds, as you've seen here. So therefore, to connect to our provisioned server, it's as easy as uh, just copying the IP address. You can just click on the IP address. It's going to be copied to clipboard. And now I just do SSH root and I just paste in my IP address I hit enter I say yes and there you go as easy as that now you can just go and uh, maybe inspect your server get some details and here you have graphs to monitor the resources the usages it's live so you, as your server is running you can monitor it quite useful so there you go that was the tutorial i hope that was uh, useful for you and see you in the next videos